I was like, it was doing a bicep curl and I was like, oh, and I was like moaning and groaning. And he was just like, he was like laughing his head off. It was so freaking cute. Aww. I love him. Oh my goodness. I know your stories and your, your pictures and everything are always so amazing. Okay. So we're going to try this again. So welcome to Thursday nights. Um, Thursday nights is team wild Rain's team call. So welcome. Um, make sure you put your win in the chat and throw in any questions that you have in there while we're going. Um, Jen on the West coast and Jen on the East coast here are going to be leading you tonight. And we're talking about closing. And before we get going, I want to tell you about the person that is going to make or break your business. Cause there is one person that is going to make or break your business. And so what I want everybody to do right now is take their hand and put it on their heart. Do it. I'm looking, I'm looking at all of you. <laughs> You hear that heartbeat, feel that heartbeat, that's you. You are the person, you are the only person that makes or break your business. When someone says no to you, yes, it can sting sometimes. When someone goes to you or doesn't join you, sure, it can sting sometimes. But guys, this is purpose, this is you. You determine what happens and what you focus on in your business. So shake it out, let's get ready to get rocking and rolling. Um, and honestly, like we just need, we just need to keep going. We share, we follow up, we repeat, we share, we follow up, we repeat. You know, sometimes people don't respond. Sometimes we get in conversations and we don't know how to switch them and where to go. And that's where we can take pictures of our screens, take screenshots of our conversations, lean into the success club thread, share those conversations with your coach so they can help you in those conversations. And Jen and I are hoping to help you feel really confident and strong when it comes to closing so that we can get those conversations going into where we want them, which is success stories. Um, last week we shared in the chat and I think in 12 of us, we had over a thousand pounds evicted. We had over 18 medications kicked to the curb. Like what we're offering is life changing, health changing, energy changing, stuff. And that is where we want to get people to say yes to themselves and then to commit and move forward. And maybe it's not for them, but feel good about what you're offering because you're offering really, really good solutions. Um, I'm not trying to knock any other company, but I don't need my lipstick and my jewelry. I don't need that. I need my health. I'm thankful to be off two medications and down over 120 pounds. And I passionately believe this journey for me is being able to help others, giving children their moms back, helping busy women get, get it done, get healthy, come with a happier energy and positivity so that they can help others in their lives. So I am super super excited. And I love what we have to offer. It's changed my life. It has changed my life. And that's what we get to offer to others. So I would love, Jen's going to share, um, she's going to share the screen. She's got, she's got special access. So she's going to share some slides and we're just going to go through some slides and have some conversations. We've got a document, a Google doc. Well, I don't think it's a Google doc. It's a, they're called a, I guess it is a Google Drive, but there's a Google Drive that's going to have a lot of the conversations. So you don't have to worry about like memorizing the questions or writing down super feverishly. Um, so I'm going to share that. Uh, make sure you grab that document from the chat. And we're going to talk about mastering the clothes. And this is how we get results. This is how we. Um, take someone from being curious and interested to getting results. So before we get started, Jen, was there anything that you wanted to add or, or bring up? Let's roll. Okay. No nonsense. Let's get it done. Cause then I want to take some action. We're going to um, take some action and get some conversations. So, oops. Where's the screen? So one thing that I want you to 
take a second and realize is you have the solutions. This is something I actually started doing a few months ago. And before I start having conversations with someone, when I'm going to my messenger, when I'm going to my phone or my computer, and I'm actually going to talk to somebody about what we have, I pretend I'm putting on a coach hat. I pretend I'm actually putting on a hat and I get myself in the mindset that I'm the one with the answers. I know I can help them. I just need to know where they struggle and what they want. And so that's something that has really helped me because the person who is asking the questions, the person who's leading the interview is the person with the power. And by power, I mean, they're the one with the solutions. And if someone has liked a post or asked you a question about something you're sharing, they're confused. They're looking for a solution. They're dealing with a struggle. Or maybe they're really excited about something that's coming up. So in my experience, someone is not going to say yes and purchase a program until it's either hurting so bad that they can't take it anymore or unless they're really, really flipping excited. I love that Michelle, um, Shannon shout out Michelle for her wedding last week because that's something to get excited about. When someone's preparing for a wedding, they're preparing for that day that all the eyes are gonna be on them on top of a huge mountain. <laughs> like when they're gonna have all those eyes on them and they want to feel their best in their skin, that's the kind of excitement that gets someone to say, yes, I need a plan and I wanna follow a plan, right? And when, on the other hand with me, I was at that pain point. I was in front of my closet. I couldn't close my pants. I was wearing the big LuLaRue dresses over my pants so you couldn't see they weren't closed. And I was over 300 pounds for the third time in my life. I was at that frustration pain point that I didn't want it to hurt anymore, but I didn't know what to do and I didn't believe in myself. So those are two extremes of the end that both got us to say yes. So by asking questions and finding out where they are, what would get them excited, um, what would 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 get them you know feeling better if they're at that pain point is going to help you get to the next stop and the way we do that is first by being interested and asking um when someone private messages me and say oh my gosh what are you doing or likes a post or comments i want info or maybe they answer a poll in your story something i used to always do was Give them all the information immediately. Has anybody else done that? Like give all the information like, okay, here, this is what I do. It's so great. It's going to be great. And that may get someone to sign up with you if they're like really, really, really special and ready to say yes. But most people are not ready. And those numbers and programs are not the answers they need right now. They need to know a little bit more. And that's why I put on my coach hat when someone likes or asks for more information and I come at it and I say, thank you so much. I am so excited. I love what I do. I love that you commented that you want more information. Which part stuck out to you? What part of what I shared was what made you reach out? Or what part of what I shared do you feel would help you? Where are you struggling? And starting to ask those questions. We're going to be going through some of those questions. Um, as we go through the, the presentation um, to help uncover what is that pain point that they need to get out of or what is that excitement point that they wanna work towards. What do you say, Jen? Oh, ah, where'd you go? Okay, there you are. Um, so while we're going for no and we're having conversations, this is one thing where I want to challenge you to be excited about the conversation. I sincerely, this is not BS. I ask myself every morning, who do I get to help and who do I get to talk to? Because I don't know if you've noticed, but I like to talk. I enjoy a conversation. I have fun. And in getting to know someone, in having a conversation, in getting to share, hear what they're going for, that's a win. That's a seed planted. I, I personally said no eight times. So if Jamie would have attached her asking me to a specific outcome and determined that I'm going to say yes and I told her no, she could have given up on me. Um, and that's where taking the time to keep digging in and getting to know people, keep sharing your posts, keep working on your journey and following up is going to help you realize that the win is the conversation. Even if they're not answering you, that is a win. Um, 
at the very, the odds do get better the more you learn how to have conversations and questions. And I promise you, all you have to do is have more conversations and questions to have that help you even more. Um, for me personally, as you get better, it will get easier. But right now you want to talk to at least 10 people to get one yes. And by talking to 10 people, you may have to message 20 people to get 10 people in a serious conversation. So just know that keeping a list, keeping a running track of a list of who you're talking to so you're able to follow up with them um, and work through working through a list will help you see how many people you're actually talking to. When I got started, I felt like I was asking everybody and nobody was joining me. But when I actually wrote it down, I was talking to the same 13 people. I just was going and cycling them kind of like a deck of cards. And so what I want to encourage you is if you haven't already, that success club tracker is a phenomenal tracker to use. I use a notebook and write everybody's name and have little codes next to it. And I can't tell you how many times I end up writing names and talking and reaching out to people. And then someone I haven't talked to or even thought about in months randomly reaches out to me. So I feel like there's something in the karma and the energy of putting out and looking and talking to people that brings those like Shannon shared people reached out to her. Right. And I feel like if you're actively working all the time and reaching out that will cause some to come back to you and people will follow up. Um, and then there's some ways you can offer um, free value, like share a recipe. But one way that you can share a recipe is share a picture of the recipe and say, you know, drop a heart if you would love this recipe and I'll message it to you. And then ask for their email and send it by email. And then that way you can start an email conversation, have an alternate way to reach out to them and start building a list. Um, and then also, I think maybe in, in a couple hundred people that I've talked to and three and a half years of coaching, I think there is only one time that someone said never to talk to them again. And that was totally on them. And it was totally their personal choice. They weren't ready. And my succeeding upset them. Um, but Everybody else, they're the only person that I no longer have on my list because they said, never reach out to me. I'm like, okay, no problem. I'm sorry. I certainly hope my passion didn't come across pushy, right? I mean, I just love what I do. It's, if it's not for you, that's okay. And that's something, that line I use a lot. Uh, not a lot. I shouldn't say a lot. But that is something that if someone hasn't answered any of my questions for a while, I say, Hey, I hope my passion hasn't come across pushy. I just have a lot of fun. If it's not for you, that's okay. But I want to make sure that I didn't overstep a bound. Are we good? You know, and that usually gets them answering. And a lot of times they just opened my message and forgot, or they absolutely actually just weren't, weren't ready. And they were not believing in themselves and feeling kind of scared. And they felt like if they answered me, they would have to commit and they weren't ready to take that step. But keeping that bridge open um, and not crossing them off the list. I shared recently, it took me almost three, four years to ask my sister to join me to like really look at my list and realize I never asked her officially. I just assumed she would join me because I gave her some free shakes once and and she's my sister and she knows what I'm doing and she's watched me transform. But I realized this past fall that I never actually invited her. And so I went for it. I said, I'm just going to go for it. I'm going to invite her. So that's what I did. Um, so we're going for no. Go for no. I was going to say, and to add on to that, like, we have to remember that like, Time is going to be an excuse for a lot of people, whether they say they don't have time or it's not, not the right time. Sometimes it's just not the right time. And so knowing that when you are giving them that option and you're following up with them and saying, I know it wasn't there. I know the timing was really not right three months ago, but I have another group starting. Like you just don't know who is going to be ready to go. So don't be scared to send that fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth follow-up knowing that the timing really could be bad for some people or they're injured or they're sick or, you know, there's so many reasons why people say that the timing isn't right. Um, but just know that timing is everything. And when you say the, when you 
ask the, someone and the timing is right, they're going to say yes. I love that reminder. I really do. That actually just happened to me tonight. I had someone say no a couple times and I just sent a share cart before the meeting and she reached out and she said, Hey, I'm ready. And I was like, Oh, I didn't even follow up with her this, this week, this month yet. Um, so definitely, definitely staying, staying open. And I love that. Thank you, Jen. Um, so how to guide your questions. I love these little, little tidbits because not only are you going to learn important information, but you're also going to find connection points because this is, I mean, you want to be able to work together. If you have to, if you have to like work really hard to get them to answer a question or you have to work really hard to get them to respond to you and you just don't connect, that is going to continue once they start the program. And unless they're solely focused and able to manage it themselves, they're probably not going to continue through. The magic of the accountability and working with you is going to be the same once they have the program. So it is okay. Like I said, only one person is going to make or break your business. If you're in a conversation and you don't get along with someone and, and you're not able to work together or have conversations and answer and ask questions and have respect for each other, that's not someone that needs to be a part of your business. You may not, this may not be for them. They may not be for you. And that's okay. I want to give you like permission that you get to choose who you work with. And let me tell you, it is a heck of a lot of fun to work with people who want to talk to you and have fun talking to you and lean in with you versus trying to chase and make people do things because you're going to be spinning your wheels. You're going to have much better results and they're going to have much better results if you can connect and have these conversations. And what you learn about from family, maybe you find out you both have a nine-year-old. Like, oh my gosh, I have a nine-year-old too. Like while you're asking questions about how they want to feel and how they want to look, find out about their family. You know, are they, are they married? Is their spouse going to be a support or, or a problem. And by problem, I mean, maybe their spouse doesn't care what they eat. And so their spouse is going to bring soda chips and temptation and try to get them to eat bad. So that's a huge thing to know. Hey, I'm, I have that situation. Like I have that struggle. I can give you tips. You're going to get along with so many of the women in the group. It's going to be a blast. It's a connection point. It builds your, it builds a bridge between them and you and it helps your relationship, but it also helps you know what tools would be good for them. So if I haven't given them the list of A or B at this point in the conversation and I find out, I'm going to make a mental note. Now, this is not when we start throwing up on them and giving them all the solutions. We just start collecting data. We're making notes and collecting data. So I'm going to think about, you know, to be mindset, dinner and done, um, you know, pretzels, uh, puzzles instead of pretzels, you know, find other fun and, and things like that. I'm going to be mentally thinking of talk about their occupation. Are they working full time outside of the home? Is packing lunch and temptation at the office a struggle? Are they in the medical field where they can't even touch food because someone had an emergency and now, you know, they end up not eating for 10 hours at a time and then there's pizza is the only thing around. Like, what is their struggle or what can help them? Do they have a work fridge? Maybe they work from home. Um, what do they like to do recreation wise? Um, and so find out what are their strengths? What are their goals? Um, I love uh, one of the questions that will be getting to in that template a little bit later, uh, I've been using this week and it's worked really great. And it's been asking when you look in the mirror, what do you see right now? And so you usually hear a lot of negative stuff. I feel like we are so hard on ourselves in general, women, like we are just so hard on ourselves and you hear them say, well, I'm, I'm fat. They start saying like really negative things. And then turn it around and ask the question, what do you want to see when you look in the mirror? What is your ideal you? How do you want to feel when you look in the mirror? What parts of your body do you see that you want to have be strong? Tell me about that. And now you got them thinking about this strong core, these lean shredded arms, their, their butt being lifted and you start, and now you're getting their, their adrenaline going, they're getting, you're getting their excitement and you're finding out, um, how they want to look and how they want to feel and say, okay, what is something you're really good at? 
What are you really good at? Um, and I really challenge, like, some people are really good at organization. Some people are good at staying calm. Um, some people are good at listening. So find out what that is, and you're building all these things to help them find a solution. Do you have anything to add, Jen? Yep. Nope. Okay. So, um, these are some of the questions I said, again, that spreadsheet that I have in the chat, you want to save that um, or do a screenshot of this. These are some of the questions uh, that I love. What piqued your interest? You know, what have you tried out already? Because if you, um, if they're currently doing a, an hour long hit workout at the gym and they hate it, so they're only going once a week instead of seven days a week because they don't like what they signed up for and you offer them a hit program complete with nutrition, they're not going to want to do it because they're already doing it and it's not getting them results because they don't love it. So you got to find out a little bit more. Um, what have they tried? What's working? What's going well? Are they getting their water in? Are they, um, are they loving meal prepping? They just don't know what to make or are they really struggling? Um, this is another one that I really love is how is your nutrition? And then when they answer, you know, if it's a strength or a weakness, Say, tell me more about that. That's the, the great little five letter. Tell me more about that. Anytime they give you a little one word answer or you need more information, tell me more about that. It's a, it's a great answer to throw in. Um, do you struggle with cravings? What time and when? Now, this is when you're going to find out they struggle with sugar, they struggle with energy, they're having so many coffees, they're having lots of five hour energy drinks, and you're you know, they're having gut issues. They aren't going to the bathroom regularly. You may find out a whole bunch of things and your instinct's going to be like, oh my gosh, Shakeology is going to solve that. But we're still in the data collecting. We still want to find a little bit more. Do they have any injuries? What kind of exercise do you like? Um, do you want, you know, why do you want to lose weight? Uh, and again, there's the mirror question. I think there's... Um, more questions. Ooh, the yes roll. I love this. So after you've collected enough data that you have an idea of how to help them, you have a general idea of where they struggle, you have an idea of how they want to feel, um, this is when we get them on a yes roll. And so um, I can kind of go through, I'm going to impromptu to kind of read through my chat that I had tonight that I sent a share cart out over. Okay. So I was, she was telling me how she wants to feel and I say, okay, so I think this is going to be great. So what I hear you saying is, your perfect self, you want to have energy, strong arms, and you want to flatten your stomach. Is that right? And she says, yes. And then I'm like, okay, can you tell me a little more about your abs? Are you picturing ripped abs or a soft stomach? Like, what are you picturing when you think about um, your stomach? And she explained, I really just want to flatten it, get rid of my mommy pouch. I'm like, okay, I totally, totally get you there. So based on what we had talked about in our earlier message, I really feel the bar program is going to be great for you. It's going to come set you up with the portion fix nutrition and the workouts are just 30 minutes, five days a week. You're going to find that even with the two and three pound weights, your arms are going to be burning and you are going to be flattening your midsection. And I actually sent a picture of Miss Kelly and I said, these are Kelly's five week results. And I just love how confident and strong she is. Look at her stomach toning up. Is this like what you are looking for? And she was like, oh my gosh, yes. She actually was like, holy shit, that's amazing. Yes, that's what I'm looking for. So I had her say yes three times. She confirmed how she wants to feel. She confirmed um, that that sounds like what she wants to commit to. We had done a little more talking about the food and, and the portion containers earlier in the program. And then we went through and I said, well, this is great. Okay, perfect. Um, I'm just going to ask a few more questions so I can get a shared card set between us and 
we'll get you started. And so I went through there and got her started with that. But it's getting on the yes, asking them how they want to feel, reiterating what they were telling you and making sure that they feel heard and use their name, like use their name, let them know that they're heard. People like to hear their name. So use their name. And Jen, I love what you were sharing with me earlier about um, the yes role. Can you lean in a little on there? Oh, I don't remember what I was sharing. <laughs> were you doing good about the, about having them say, um, we were talking, you were saying about having them say like, yes, multiple times in a row. I think you gave me an yeah. example. Yeah. So like confirming that what you, what you're hearing is what they're looking for. And so as you're, they're saying, you're saying, is, am I hearing this correct? They say, yes. Then you say, well, you know, um, so if we were to do this, do you think this would be something you could commit to? They say yes, right? So like the more that they say yes, 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 that word is in their head. And then their natural reaction when you say, are you ready to do this? They are going to say yes. The more you get them to say yes, the more the higher percentage that they're going to say yes. When you say, all right, you ready to get this all set up? They're going to say yes, because they've said yes 10 times before that. And what I had, I have so much fun with getting them to say yes now that I've been practicing this is they're actually, one thing that I used to have a lot is people say it costs too much money. They don't have the money. They don't want to spend the money. And what I found is getting them to say yes and reiterate why they're wanting to join you, how the program you're offering is going to be a fix in their life. That's the value. I sent a share a cart and she didn't even, we didn't even talk about the price. We had no conversation about the price. She, I could have sent her a share cart for $600 and she would have no clue. She was just excited and we set it up. Um, now it wasn't $600, but I'm just saying like when you build the yes and give them the story of this is how you feel, this is how you want to feel. I know this is going to help you get there. Is this what what you want to commit to. Does this sound like it'll help you? You've answered all their concerns. Money is really not the question anymore. Like, like I find people spend money when they know the value they're getting. And if you take the time to build that bridge, have that conversation with them, understand where they're struggling and where they want to go. And you know, for sure, you're connecting them to where they want to go. The money is not the object. The money is not the concern or the holdup anymore because I personally have found most 99% of the time I don't have the money is either I don't see the value, I don't understand why I would want to pay for that, or I don't believe in myself yet. It's not, I don't have the money. If I were to say there's a, you know, your perfect body is in the wall right here. And all you have to do is pay $200 to break it down and get it out. I think you would find $200 to break the wall and get it out. So it's really getting to see the value and accept it and say yes. Um, and then this is just talking a little bit about what I had shared about earlier is find connection points. It's going to make it more fun. You're going to learn more about them. You're going to find out how you can help them more and you're going to have more fun. If you're having fun and they're having fun, everyone gets more results. That's just what happens. Um, and it's not just because John Acuff says, if you want it done, make it fun. Um, but that is just true. We just show up for each other and we have fun and we have a great time and then we lean on each other. Um, okay. That is all on that one. I was going to say, and to add on to that, so when you're building bridges, sorry, my dog is being, he just wants to be near me. Um, when you're building bridges um, and talking to people, not everyone is going to relate to your story. So just understanding that um, it's important to learn about your teammates and it's important to, um, you know, learn someone's story every week, right? Go to their page, find their transformation, Find a, sto a recent story that they've shared, read it a couple times, and really get to know that person and understand what they've gone through so that when you're talking to someone who's like, you know, has the story of Emily, you can say, that's crazy. One of the girls who I work with, Emily, had such a similar story. I love, like, this is what she went through. And she started her journey four years ago. And 
she worked through X, Y, and Z, and now this is where she's at. And then share the transformation picture. Keep a, keep a little folder on your computer and, and have transformation pictures of stories that you know so that when you're like, and check this out, look at her now. And she's, you know, she's thriving and she's happy with her body and whatever that, that looks like for that person, but be able to share your teammates. Not, and if there's not teammates, there's plenty on the Be Body Book too. On our, on our uh, tools and trainings for all of the programs, they all have transformations of people and they all share stories. So take 10 minutes a week to learn a new story. It's worth it. Absolutely. Any picture and story in the Wild Rain Collective team page and taking it a step further, any transformation story on the Beachbody blog, you are able to use as part of your business. And so, yeah, I challenge you to find the team and go, go look at the Transformer Awards, go look in the team page. We should probably start another a thread of transformations and stories, whether it's, whether it's coming off medication, whether it's building your business, whether it's like, like you, Jen and Rita, you have, you know, you have trainer experience and you're like super fit already and how this has transformed your life. So someone like me, who's evicted 120 pounds and I'm talking to someone who just wants to like, like tone up or find out, you know, what's messing up in the kitchen because they're, they're a personal trainer and they're not seeing the results and they're doing like five aerobic classes a week. Um, I can go and share that story and I challenge everybody share other people's stories on your, um, Facebook page too, on your Instagrams and Facebooks Do either, uh, transformation Tuesday or women crush Wednesday or, a uh, shout out Saturday or shout out Sunday and shout out a different story. Um, if you don't have a child, you shout out, you know, someone from the team who's a mom. Um, if you have a child and you get to stay at home and be a stay at home mom, shout out a busy working mom, you know, and kind of like shout out different stories so you can talk to the different people in your life. Um, so I love that. And now that you've built this relationship, you've had this conversation and you've learned, you can make a strong recommendation. This is another time I say, get excited, assume they're going to say yes, because you know it, right? You know how they feel now, how they want to feel, and you know you have the tools to get them there. This is when you put your coach hat, make sure it's on and tight, and you get, you get excited to say, okay, I am so excited because this is going to be so great for you. I just know that adding in this shake is going to help you skip the drive through and have healthy breakfast um, on your way to your work. How, having our meal plan is going to help you set yourself up for success um, and have that go-to food during your busy schedule at work. You're going to be able to get your workouts done at home in just 20 minutes. This program is going to be great for you. I can't wait to get you started and have you wearing that that dream wedding dress, wearing that two-piece bikini, wearing those size 10 jeans again, whatever it is that they're telling you they want, you recap what they want in there. Does this sound like it will help you get to your goals? Because I'm sure it will when you lean in with me. And they usually say yes, and you start that yes role. And then we say, this is gonna be so great. Okay, let's just pick your shake flavor. Do you, and then we can go through those, those prompt lists. And uh, did you have anything in the closing time you wanted to add, Jen? Extra no, tips. that's it. Here's some just some extra tips. Okay. I'm grabbing my little template. This is going to be great. And you can change it up. I like having. Um, Hmm. Something's going on with the internet. No. Flavor. Ordering questions. So I have a little um, ordering crush. Oh. Do you want me to run through this slide? Oh yeah, if you want to, I'm just cutting and pasting the- No, you're good. 
So just some extra tips when you're closing, never argue with the person, agree with what they're saying, and then challenge them. Um, a great way to do that is say, I agree with what you're saying, but also think about, and then throw in your, I guess for, for easy words sake, your argument that you're, you're trying to prove, right, the point, um, but never negate what they're saying and say, no, that's not true, or I don't agree with you, right? Agree with what they're saying, and then say, but also maybe think about this part, right? Um, use feel felt found. I know how you feel. I felt the same way. What I have found is um, Don't try to change it. It works. It's a great great method to get to someone's to, to make a connection with someone in a concise simple um, way and Obviously don't be disappointed with a no. It's not no forever. Um, it's not about you, right? It's about them and so Focusing on being interested in them and what they're looking for and detach yourself from what they're going to say because ultimately You can't decide for them what their decision is They are going to decide for themselves and you have to respect that And then keeping it simple right kiss them keep it simple. You don't want to give them too much information typically um, I have found that when you are giving that, you know, when they're like, okay, I'm ready to go. And then you send them this huge long thing and then they ghost you. Sometimes we're just giving them a little bit too much information or we're making it a little bit too complicated. And for a lot of people who have never done something like this before, it can be scary. And that's like a red flag to a lot of people when you're like, oh, and then this, 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 and you throw in all the things, right? A lot, that's a, some people enjoy it, but you don't want to scare people off by giving them too much. If they ask for more, you have, the, you have the ability to share more with them, um, but keeping it simple is gonna be the easiest way to have them understand what the flow looks like, how it's gonna help them, how they're going to get started, what it's gonna look like for the next three, four, six weeks, whatever program they get into, and then what results they are looking for and what they should expect. It's, it's like when you ask for ranch at a restaurant, this is what, this is what I relate it to because I worked as a server for so long, like someone would say, can I get, can I get a side of ranch? And I used to work with people that would literally give like a bowl of it. And I'd be like, but they're not going to use all of that. So give them a little bit. And when they ask for more, give them more. They can always ask for more. But you can never take back what you've already given. I love it. So we are coming in to, it's 9.42, so maybe um, we should, I don't, am I freezing? Is that me? I think the boys must have got on the internet. Um, so I put in the, in the messenger chat my ordering questions, what I send to them. And what I do, so you can pick that out of there. Also, scroll to the top. Make sure you get the Google Doc. And what do you think, Jen? If if nobody has any questions, maybe we should get some time. What do you think? Yeah, that's fine. This is just some easier ways to talk to someone who's interested in coaching. Um, just make it a little um, bit more personable and, um, and seems to, um, seems to, am I giving back, am I getting back chatter? Um, and just, uh, and, and have a normal conversation with someone. That's what you're doing. You're having a conversation. You don't need to put on a front. You don't need to be someone else. You don't need to be someone else. Another Act like yourself. I'm going to stop sharing. Okay, so we figured for the last 15 minutes, we could work on we these work skills on these. that we have. So for the last 15 minutes, we're going to work on follow-ups. If you guys have questions, put them in the chat and we can answer them. But we're just going to have a quick little 15-minute work session and finish this team call.